Branding, as we understand it in Ghana, is a conscious and proactive management of our nation's identity. Our identity is what really we are, what makes us stand out, and where we're going. We need to manage this in a very conscious and proactive manner so that at the end of the day, the behaviors of our people support the kind of promise to ourselves and to international stakeholders. Now, your brand in Ghana, which is the first liberated African country with a strong culture, a rich history and heritage, it's very easy to ride the crest of that wave. Do you take advantage of that fact? It's not enough to have heritage and culture. It's not even enough to have rich endowments, uh, natural endowments, which we have. It's about how do you manage it in a very, very conscious manner for today and into the future. It is in this area that Ghana, like many other countries in Africa, have difficulty. Now, the half century for Ghana was an auspicious year because it was the year in which oil was discovered in the Jubilee oil fields. Um, how are you using this new potential oil wealth to reposition Ghana? Yes, it gives us just a leverage. But beyond that, we need people to manage it. We need to think about today, how much do we need for today, a balance between today and to the future. And so you need a regulatory framework that protects us for today, as well as uh, leverages into the future. All these things are being considered by the current government. But civil society is also making tremendous output and not leaving government alone to do it. For me, the beauty is that civil society with government are creating the kind of environment that will enable the oil to be uh, put to good use, the oil money to be put to good use, that is. One of the baffling issues around Ghana is that despite periods of instability, it's generally been a good and stable country politically, but it's had varying inconsistencies in terms of economic management and from being the liberator of Africa to one of the weak African economies is something that people can't reconcile. How do you explain it? Ghana has had a checkered history from independence within Nkrumah. Basically, a focus on natural resources is a wrong focus for every country. It must be a focus on people, how to make people, how to create and build citizenship to sustain the use of the natural resources. Basically, this is the area that Ghana hasn't done well, which is why we have checkered history, the performance of the economy. Uh, we have all these turbulences that could have been managed a better way if we had had a focus on a people who must manage their resources. You keep on referring to issues of human capital, management and regulation. What is the new government doing about engendering a spirit of entrepreneurship so that Ghana's people can take advantage of the opportunities that are now available to them? Democratic leadership and all the governance institutions are in place. We also are affecting civil society in a way to contribute, to, in, to contribute in creating a kind of enabling space for businesses to thrive in this country. There's a realization that government alone cannot do it. So civil society is putting pressure on government, working with government to make sure that Ghana actually gets where it ought to be as a country.